I hit between five to nine shots with various clubs and the results were, quite frankly, shocking. If you look at some of the reviews of the Garmin Approach R10, you'll find several saying that it's the best value launch monitor that you can buy and you'll find others saying it's an absolute waste of money. So, which is it? For many, accuracy is the key question here. As an entry level unit, no one should be expecting perfection. Something I tell my wife every time she catches me leaving my plates near the dishwasher instead of in it. But there comes a point when a gadget's unreliable accuracy renders it pretty much useless. So, is this unit an entry level launch monitor or just an expensive toy? I'll cover what the unit is like to use now, how accurate it is when compared to a popular alternative launch monitor that many golfers have reasonable access to, and who, if anyone, should actually buy it in 2024. The Garmin R10 has a very attractive price point of $599 in the US and £499 in the UK. More recently, you can often find it on sale, where I've linked to any offers down in the description below, and don't forget the significant discounts that you can find when buying the unit secondhand, which is exactly what I did. The R10 unit itself is small and feels pretty well made. In the box, you get a launch monitor and a magnetic stand, which feels pretty sturdy, a phone holder that clips onto the side of your bag, a USB charging cable, and a nice carry case. The unit has 10 hours of battery life, which is plenty, and is IPX7 water resistant so you shouldn't have any worries if you get caught out in the rain. With that said, the unit did struggle to work properly for me when I was using it at the driving range during a rain shower that was so heavy, even Noah would have looked out the window and thought, hmm, maybe I won't take the boat out today. It uses Bluetooth to connect to your phone or tablet via the Garmin Golf app, which works both on Apple and Android devices. The Garmin app is very easy to use and well laid out. You can use the R10 both indoors and outdoors. As a Doppler radar system, the further the unit can see the ball travel, the more data it has to perform its calculations. You can use any golf balls that you like, and it's also compatible with RCT golf balls. These are unique golf balls designed to help improve the accuracy of Doppler-based launch monitors when using it in a net. A bit later in this video, I'll cover off the differences that I experienced when using the R10 with a net compared to using it outside at the driving range. To use the unit, you simply connect it to its magnetic stand and then set it down behind you in line with your target line. You can buy a third party stand such as this one, which will help make sure it's correctly positioned. As a minimum, you need six feet between the unit and the ball and then at least another eight feet between the ball and the net in front of you, if you're using it indoors or into a net. Now, I've seen a lot of forum posts saying that the unit can struggle with interference from various sources, ranging from electronic equipment when using it indoors to concrete floors when using it at the driving range. Now, I didn't have any of these issues when using it in a net in my garden, and you can check out my full review of that net right here. And the only interference issue that I had at my local driving range was during that biblical rainstorm. If you're looking for a simulator experience where you play a round of golf on a virtual course, then you can either pay £9.99 per month for a subscription for the cartoony style software that comes with the Garmin app, or you can connect it to a few different third-party software providers, again via subscriptions, and the prices do vary. It's worth noting that you can gain limited access to the E6 Golf app for free of charge when you sign up for an account. I've never got much enjoyment from simulated golf, even on an expensive Trackman unit. Part of the enjoyment of golf for me is being outside in the elements. For some reason, topping a golf ball into a virtual lake is a lot less fun than topping a real golf ball into a real lake. So I've not really got much more to say on the simulator experiences that you get with the R10. I messed around with E6 and Home Tee Hero and they're not really for me. If you want to know more, there's plenty of YouTube videos which go into a lot of detail on each of these apps. The driving range app and functionality is what I use the most. And when you go in, you see a pretty familiar looking layout. When you hit your balls, you get a shot tracer of what the R10 thinks was the distance, direction, and shape that shot was. And you can easily navigate through the screens to get a more in-depth breakdown of the shot, ball, and club head data, as well as a recording of your swing if you had that feature turned on, as well as your phone lined up behind you. However, the recording quality is pretty poor for some reason. As you can see here, it looks like I was filming it on a potato rather than my iPhone 11. All this data is available for every shot you hit with the R10, 
which means you can select any club and start spotting the trends in your shots. One of the key features of the R10 that really sets it apart from its competitors in this price range is the amount of data that it provides. The R10 measures five different data points, ball speed, club head speed, launch angle, launch direction, and swing time. Now, don't be alarmed by how few data points that seems. All launch monitors use a limited set of recorded data, and then they run it through their algorithms and then provide additional estimated information. Generally speaking, the more expensive and advanced the unit, then the more data points it's actually recording and then using that as part of its calculations. The R10 shows all of the following data. Aside from shot shape and carry distance, the key ones that stand out to me are club path, club face to path, and club angle. Other launch monitors in this price bracket don't provide this data. If you're trying to work on fixing a slice or a hook, these are key numbers that you need to understand and get under control. If you're like me, then you respond well to actually seeing those numbers and visuals on the screen after each shot you hit, as you try to tweak your swing to get the numbers closer to where you want them. But I found that this is where some doubts started to creep in. When I was using the R10 with a net in my garden for several sessions, I was pretty happy and impressed with what I was seeing. To me, the data felt accurate, and on the occasions when it seemed that it was throwing out significantly wrong numbers, well, they were few and far between. To repeat what I said earlier, at this price point, I do not expect perfection, and there will be some misreads. But when you're using a launch monitor indoors, it's a case of the blind leading the blind. Neither you nor the unit actually know what the ball flight should really look like. So you just have to trust that the launch monitor has made a better guess than you would. The more expensive the launch monitor, the more faith that I'd have. So I took the R10 with me to a top tracer driving range where I could actually see the ball flight for myself and compare it with what the R10 was showing me. And I could compare the results of the exact same shot with the top tracer launch monitor as well. I lined the R10 up the best I could and I hit between five to nine shots with various clubs and the results were, well, quite frankly, shocking. I'd say that for anything above my lob wedge, the top tracer was doing a far better job of accurately and consistently replicating the distance, direction, and shape of the shots that I was actually hitting. Feel free to pause the video here so you can take a good look at the numbers. But to explain, the color-coded columns on the right show the distance the R10 deviated from the top tracer for both carry distance as well as direction distance. Anything in green means that the R10 was within 10 yards of the top tracer, which I think is pretty generous anyway. I know that the top tracer isn't a 100% accurate reflection of the actual golf shots that I was hitting, but it seemed to be doing a pretty good job. When it comes to the distance, the R10 was really struggling to mimic what both myself and the top tracer were seeing, ranging from being two yards longer to as much as 29 yards shorter. The R10 seemed to fare much better when it comes to direction, ranging from being 21 yards further left to 16 yards further right when compared to the top tracer. Interestingly, you can clearly see the R10 tracking direction far closer to the top tracer with the lob wedge, pitching wedge, and seven iron, but then starting to struggle with the direction using the five iron and the driver. And from being a member of various R10 forums on the internet and looking at the comments of other reviews, these results seem pretty consistent with the experiences a lot of other R10 owners are having. So, who should buy the Garmin R10? Is it a cheap launch monitor or is it an expensive toy? Well, it's probably both at the same time. And I think you could make that same argument for all entry level launch monitors to a certain extent. Anything below the £1,000 price point can probably be all grouped together in this category where I think that you have to take the data coming from the launch monitor with perhaps a larger grain of salt than many may have initially thought. But is this level of accuracy and potential lack of consistency really a problem? If you must depend on getting consistently accurate results within a few yards, such as if you're doing club fitting or teaching, the R10 isn't really going to be the launch monitor for you, and you need to be looking at getting the next tier up of systems, such as the SkyTrack Plus, the Mevo Plus, 
or the Bushnell Launch Pro. And the same goes for any casual golfers looking to practice at home or at the range and who just can't get past the potential inconsistency of the R10. If you can justify the significant jump up in price, then I think the additional outlay will be worth it. But if you're on a limited budget and you're happy to accept the potential inconsistency of the data being provided, then the R10 could still be an ideal solution for you. When compared against the other entry-level launch monitors, the R10 is providing the most data in a simple, compact form, and it gives you the ability to have a golf simulator experience without the need for an external computer or complex permanent setup. And if having the unit is going to encourage you to practice or play more golf, then that can only be a good thing, as the only way you're going to get better is by practicing. If you're using the R10 to really dial in your club face and your club path numbers, I certainly recommend making sure that you mix up your net practice with an outdoor session, either at the course or at the range, so you can see with your own eyes what the golf ball is actually doing. You shouldn't be placing total reliance in what the R10 is telling you. But for me, using the R10 with a net last summer in my garden certainly coincided with me improving my swing path and club face control through a combination of using the data that the unit was providing as well as sheer shot repetition. And this led to me winning two competitions at my club towards the end of last year and the beginning of what I hope will be a trend of a handicap cut. I was using the R10 with a pretty minimal setup at home, and if I choose to continue using the R10, I'll probably invest in an iPad and a stand to display the data rather than using my phone. You can connect your phone or tablet to a projector if you want to get a setup with a screen, or even hook it up to a powerful enough PC and then run GS Pro, which is a far more powerful piece of simulator software. But if you're willing to spend that kind of money on your setup, I have a feeling for many, it won't be long before you're actually looking to upgrade your launch monitor to a better model. Even at £499 and being at the budget end of the launch monitor range, that's still a lot of money. Golf is, unfortunately, an expensive sport. So I'm always up for anything that can help golfers save some money, which is why I created an email newsletter where I share the best online golf deals. There's a link to sign up to it down in the description below. If you're using the Garmin R10 in your launch monitor setup, please share in the comments how you're getting on with it. If you're wondering what it's actually like to use the Garmin R10, then I'll be creating a full breakdown video, which I'll leave a link to here once I've made it. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful and you've enjoyed it. And if you like the look of the practice net that I was using in this video, then I've included my full review right here.